Hello and welcome. Now I'm really excited to share with you my rules for 2021 and how I'm planning to tackle my no buy slash low buy. And yes, I'm continuing this challenge for yet another year and that's partly to do with just like all the benefits I've experienced from doing this challenge. I've gotten so much out of it and I also feel the longer I continue to do it, the better I become at sticking to like my no buy low buy rules and like strengthening my no buy low buy muscles and I just, I really, really enjoyed it. And the other aspect for me is that I love and appreciate this community of people that have come around these no buy low buy updates and who are sharing their own experiences, who are on their own challenges and just like, other people can come and watch these videos and feel inspired and encouraged in some way to like check out and work with their own personal finances to do their own challenges and yeah I just I find it so amazing and I really want to continue to grow and build on that and help and support other people in the best way that I can from probably the other side of the world depending on where you're watching this video um so yeah Let's get into it. Like the partly also the reason I'm filming this and sharing this so early is just that if you are planning to do a no buy, low buy in 2021, this gives you some time to start paying attention and considering what would be some of the categories that you would want to work with and just start observing yourself and your own behaviors. And that does not mean become like a critical judge of yourself in any way, shape or form. Specifically, really pay attention to what things make you want to part with your cash like are you someone that really is interested in clothing or are you more of like a hobby crafts person do you really love books like what thing makes you throw caution to the wind and just spend way too much money in that category and just yeah start watching these things and thinking about it so that you can build rules that make sense for your personal situation and I'm going to be sharing mine as well so that it can give you a little bit of an idea of what I'm doing. I'm also this year doing things a little bit differently because I'm going to be working with these beautiful um, cash envelopes so I'll talk a little bit more about that um, in the video as well so I want to add in like an element of budgeting this year because I didn't really do any budgeting at all throughout 2020 so we'll get into that I'm also just like so obsessed with these envelopes because I think they're so pretty oh my goodness and the colors um so yeah let's get into it I have my trusty bullet journal as per usual <laughs> I've created a spread for 2021 in terms of just writing down all my rules and kind of what my game plan is so there's two ways I think you can do a no buy low buy. One, you could just choose a few things and put them on a no buy list or a low buy list and just focus on those couple of things. And this might be a more manageable way for someone who feels sort of intimidated by the whole thing. Um, however, what I will say is if you choose, for example, clothing and like decor items and you're like, okay, in 2021, I'm not going to buy any of those things. That's great. However, just make sure that you don't then start spending more like money in books or buying more books or more craft supplies because often we are looking for that little high of shopping and like when we part with our money, we get a little bit like tingly and we're like, oh yeah, that's a nice feeling. So what might happen if you restrict one or two areas, you might find that that behavior will just filter into somewhere else. So you could just like pay attention to that and make sure that's not something that happens. I personally like to categorize everything into either a no buy, a low buy, or just like my necessities, but I do need to purchase just for like basic survival because this really helps me to check my own behavior because I will do that thing where I will like slip into other categories more if I don't like pay attention to everything. And I also think Slowing down that feeling of like, oh yeah, I part with my money and like doing it more sparingly and less and less will help to build more gratification when it comes to when you do spend your money, when you do get something new. Um, and it will just mean more appreciation and gratitude to that thing as well. So that's why I like to do it across all categories. So then it's just, yeah, I build up that feeling if that makes sense. So anyway, my no buy category is clothing, lingerie, underwear, swimmers, shoes, jewelry, bags, pouches, accessories, decor, bedding, appliances, kitchenware, furniture, souvenirs, games slash puzzles, craft supplies, tech slash gadgets, stationery, books, makeup, experimental toiletries, sports equipment, alcohol, sugar, pleasure products, and plants. So that is a lot of things to have in a no-buy category, but are all the things that make sense for me. And what you might have noticed there is that 
I've written like accessories, but then I've also written like shoes, bags, and jewelry, which technically would come under accessories. And there's been a real conscious reason for doing that. I find for me to connect to my no buy in the most appropriate way, I can't just do an uh, sort of like umbrella category. I need to really unpack it a little bit more. And it doesn't mean I have to do that with everything. Like, you know, for example, I've just written like craft supplies and that could be unpacked more to be like sewing material or like paper products or yarn or like whatever it is. So you could unpack it more, but I've just done it with the categories that I feel like really make sense for me. So I've done it with accessories, I've done it like, I could have just been like household things, but I've done kitchenware, appliances, furniture, bedding, I've made it more clear what I mean by that. Really connecting into it, so unpacking those categories is a really helpful way for you to really like look at, okay, what do I actually mean when I say these things? Um, and a few things that I've added on here that's a bit different to last year is I've also got sugar and alcohol, which I didn't have last year, so those are two things that I'm looking at, um, as well as lingerie and underwear because I, bought some of those in 2020 and I definitely don't need any more so that's why I've now added it in for 2021 um yeah so like in general I'm just trying to do a no buy on pretty much most things now in terms of my low buy categories these are things that I do want to get but I want to get more far and few between so like I said it means more and I can build up that experience of like happiness and gratitude for the thing when I do spend money and these are actually things that are more like experience related anyway. So the things that are in my low buy category is eating out with friends, toiletries, gifts for others, self-care, travel. And then I've got experiences, but then under experiences, I've unpacked that to be movies, live music, art galleries, and nights out. Because that tends to be what my experiences are. So one thing you might have noticed is that on my no buy list I have experimental toiletries and then on my low buy list I have toiletries and you would often think that like toiletries for example is just sort of an essential and you'd put that on your essential list however that is true and that could definitely work for some people I've realized from my behavior of 2020 that that didn't work for me because I put toiletries on my essential and then I found that I was definitely spending more and buying more than I needed and then I was also experimenting in the toiletries category. So I have things that I know that work for me. I don't need to try other things out, but for whatever reason, I was like buying a new deodorant. I was trying this and I was trying that. And it just, I ended up wasting quite a bit of money doing that. So that's why I put experimental toiletries on a no buy. It's just not gonna happen in 2020. And in terms of my other toiletries, I'm only gonna get them as they're needed. So that's why they're on the low buy section. You might not need to do this, but it's just how I'm like working and hacking my own brain. So for the things that I will buy, this is going to look a little bit different for different people, like what you consider to be essential, what are the things that you're still also like going to be happy to buy in 2021, like you don't feel like it's that big of a problem that it needs to go on a low buy or a no buy list or however you want to make it work for you or however you want to prioritize your own rules. For me, my will buy list is Bills, groceries, gas, car maintenance, health needs, medication slash vitamins, um, fixing and repairing anything I already have, and then my allowances. And I'll talk about the allowances in a second. So yeah, that's pretty much how I'm setting myself up. Those are the rules that I'm going to be working with. Now, the, if, you are, if this is your first time ever doing one of those challenges, I would just say work with that and go with that. The things I'm about to go into now are just because I have done it for a year and I'm wanting to change things up and take into consideration certain things that happened throughout 2020 that I want to be a little bit different for 2021. Um, and then I'm gonna talk about the budgeting and the cash envelopes and things like that. So allowances. I've specifically looked at two areas that in the past year I've bought things in and actually I don't regret it. I don't think it was a bad thing at all. And I really wanna make sure there's space for that. But I don't wanna just put like, so that for example, the two categories is clothing and eBooks. So I don't wanna just put books on my will buy list because I don't wanna just go crazy and buy lots of books. I've specifically given myself allowance of three eBooks for the year. I've also given myself six clothing items because I did buy some clothing in 2020. I bought seven items, I think in total. And I was actually quite happy to buy a couple of things and I think I'm going to still be happy to do that in 2021 And there's a few things that I know that I'm probably going to need and then there's like one or two things I would possibly like to get a pair of jeans and something else and just to have a little bit 
of an allowance there. But I have to give myself a very specific number and I can't just put it in a logo bag category because of how my, my mind works. So I hope that makes sense. Um, that's just sort of what I've done to make it work for me. And obviously like on the first day of January, I'm not gonna just go out and be like quick, I'm gonna spend my allowances. I'm obviously gonna try and make that work for the whole year and hopefully even have like some allowance left over at the end of the year. But that's just what I've done for myself. Another thing that I have written as a rule um, and which I had last year is that like, the only exception to all of this is obviously if it's a true need. Those are my rules. That is my game plan. Now, where does the cash envelopes come in? These pretty, pretty cash envelopes. <laughs> um, so pretty much like, if you've been watching my monthly updates, you know that I don't really need to budget because I am making a lot of money at the moment. However, I really want to get good at budgeting because ultimately like I'm not always going to make this a much that I make at the moment like it's kind of crazy my income over the last year and I want to build that like capacity of being able to budget and to create sinking funds and get in the habit of saving up for something because yes I could just go and spend $200 on a new winter coat tomorrow and it wouldn't be that big of a deal it wouldn't be that big of a hit to my savings or anything like that however the process of saving up for something and learning to save for things I think is very helpful to teach yourself that and that's why I'm wanting to basically do that so I've made a bunch of cash envelopes I've made way more than I obviously need that's just because I already had the material and I was kind of like look why not um, and I also thought like if there are some people who have like consistently been checking in with my channel and share your monthly updates in the coming year and you would like to also do some cash envelope budgeting I was thinking I could possibly send some of these out to some of you lovely humans that are always yeah supportive of my channel and on your own journal, journals, uh, journals, own journeys as well. So I'm not going to talk too much about this just because I think I'll have to do a whole nother video on that. But pretty much I will be creating sinking funds for things that are in my low buy category and some of the things that are in my essentials. And then I will also be creating a weekly budget for some categories like groceries and eating out. And then I'll be having like a sinking fund for like my car maintenance, what else like health needs because like I have to save up to go to the dentist each year like just different things like this but I think I'll maybe create a separate video about that now I'm thinking about this because otherwise it'll just go on too long no one wants to be here for that long so anyway working with the envelopes working with some cash and yeah hopefully that will just be like another little element that I can add in also because I'm like mildly addicted to watching other people do cash envelope videos now anyway thank you so much for watching if you want to share with me your plan for 2021 what you want to do and just yeah like check in let me know how you're going and if you found this video helpful in some way um, also if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments below so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time bye